life can't always be exciting, so there's often the bit of mundane that comes into the world, into your life, like uh, shopping, cooking, cleaning, and of course, package opening. As I said, I don't really buy anything special. This isn't stuff that's, you know, sort of extravagant, or like an extra dress, or another pair of shoes, or whatever. It's, uh, stuff for, uh, well, house. This is, should be, I think, cooking supplies. I don't know exactly what it is, but we'll find out. As we get the package open. Ah, okay. I'm getting cooking stuff, cooking supplies. These are cake molds. Here they are. It's a cake mold. There we go. Dealing with, dealing with the glare. And they make, looks like they make miniature bunk cakes. Uh, so that you can have, I mean, th th this is the nature of what, what initially came out of Japan known as kawaii, and that's why I have the kawaii tea house, it means cute. And instead of having large cakes, they started making very small, personalized cakes. So, instead of being a piece of cake, it's an entire cake for one person. Uh, and so I've sort of liked that type of stuff. And uh, here's the baking supplies. So I can make my own little cakes. I've got the other one that's the, that makes the, uh, round, the round cakes, almost like, like a birthday cake. Uh, I haven't tried out any recipes yet. I'm still working on the kitchen to sort of get a better fix up so it could oh, excuse me, function better. But uh, this is more than sufficient. Uh, it's a, bit by bit, everything comes in. I'm still working on uh, the bathtub. Uh, the laundry room is already, already done. That's more or less fixed up. Uh, there's not really much that needs more to be done. Ooh, let's see, uh, the music room is more or less done except for the piano. That has, that's a, a, a much larger project, so it's been rescheduled because it, it is important, but it's not a priority. So, it's been pushed back in terms of the scheduling. So the other things, like, uh... The show meditations and uh, uh, tweet line plus can come out. Uh, that is occurring. I am working on the space. The, the, I got some extra uh, 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 storage space so that I can do this. I am now in the process of clearing up the editing desk to a point where uh, I can um, have enough space to do uh, the, uh, both those shows, including uh, I, uh, our. Our life as Cyborg Galva. You have to have all the space for that. It ha the the ed editing just has to be, sort of be arranged for this. Uh, and I'm moving into uh, the scripting, the filming. Uh, and it's not necessarily a script, so, so, so to speak, but rather uh, I work off of notes uh, more than I do here. Everything is from memory, but typically uh, there will be notes and things have to be organized in terms of show content and, you know, Another, there's more planning involved. Otherwise, um, I knew, do have a dilemma. I don't know what to watch on TV right now. I have a number of choices. I think I'm going to go with cartoons rather than with vlogs. Uh, that's kind of the way I'm feeling right now. I haven't been feeling well uh, since Wednesday. Uh, the burnout is still with me. I'm still uh, in the... Uh, I'm still in the... Uh, Sleep deprivation crash mode. And I haven't pulled out of it as easily as I expected it. As I expected to. But otherwise, uh, onward and upward. I was going to wait till later to do this, but uh, I'll film this now. As I said before, there's no start or end to the vlogs anymore because I have no idea when this is go where this is going to end up. 
and that's because, well, there's no real start or end to my day, and this is what happened. I was sort of thinking over something. Uh, I had a discussion with my dad, and it's the nature of Gnosis itself. It goes into all these things. Everything is sort of interconnects, uh, even though many people don't understand don't view it as as interconnected. We generally tend to think of ourselves as good people. But in many cases the different things that we do in our lives as good people leave to lead, can lead to some very horrible things. Historically the publicans the people who work for the government were considered to be the lowest of the low. Lower than pedophiles. This is true even in the church. This, this is in the parable of the uh, uh, the uh, Pharisee and the publican. Or the publican, publican and the Pharisee. And it goes as follows. There is a, public, uh, a Pharisee who is doing his duty in church. He follows the law. He follows the kosher laws to an exacting point. The Pharisees are very conscientious about the law. They spend most of the day studying the law. That's this is where your lawyers stem from. Your stem, lawyers stem from the tradition of the Pharisee, who uh, knew the laws backwards and forwards and sort of followed them to the T. And so he was in the synagogue, in the temple, doing his duty, and in comes this publican. The publican, and this is within kosher law. There are certain people you're not supposed to touch because they're unclean. They're not properly kosher. And the publicans were, and same thing, the Samaritan, were of this untouchable class that you weren't even supposed to touch them. So in walks this publican, and the only thing he's saying is, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, over and over again, and it, it, it's Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Not even looking up at, at, the, at the time they had icons, and they had, they had a number of different things. Uh... Not looking up, not always his face to the ground, pleading and begging for forgiveness. And the Pharisee is standing there, looking down at this person, and saying, you know, I do my fasting, I do my prayer, I'm not like this person. And that's in his prayers. His prayers are, are of self-righteousness. And we are understood when, within the teachings of the church, within with the teaching of some of the fathers that, that, that I've followed, that I'm following the path in, that they, this is an Eastern understanding of things. That the lowest of the low, if they understand their, their, their condition, will be forgiven, but the self-righteous who laud themselves above others will not. And this is, and again, it's the self-righteousness that leads to the condemnation. So this place is where the publican is. It doesn't excuse what the publican does. And the publican is the person who acts as the go-between between the king, the, 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 the imperial powers, and the citizens. And they can, because of the authority given to them, and this is the study by uh, Dr. Philip Zimbardo in the Stanford University, it's something known as a Lucifer effect. You give somebody even a little bit of authority, like they say in, in, in the public health authorities, they take it to the nth degree and they will abuse it. They become evil. They become left hand path, they become darkened by it. And they slowly but surely get dragged down into a point where they believe what they're doing is okay, it's fine. This is what happened to the good people of Germany. And what happened is, the, 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 what ended up with Auschwitz and six million Jews dead started in the 1900s. It, it, it wasn't just happened, it didn't happen, but it was worked up to. They sterilized people who didn't they thought were defective. Top scientists and doctors, hey, these people are defective, they sterilize them. Then they started euthanizing them. They told the nurses to go around. They gave them a list of people who were defective. They weren't properly genetically, they, they weren't in their, in their proper genetic condition. 
in order to preserve the race, because this is why, why you sterilize it, to preserve the race, to preserve the human uh, species, you needed to sterilize these people. And then, of course, when the sterilization didn't, didn't seem to be working too well, uh, you, ha you did sterilize people, but didn't stop the defects from occurring. So I said, well, let's, let's start euthanizing these people. Because, well, they're, we're around, they're not living a good life, and so let's euthanize them. That means to kill them. And that's what happened. The nurses and doctors within the hospitals, or the, or the doctors and would go around, doctors would go around, determining who would live and who would die. The nurses would come up and give the injections that would overdose the patient, and away they'd go. What's happening now? With the lockdowns, which have been historically shown not to work, people are becoming depressed, they're committing suicide, you have an increased level of an increased number of overdoses, and ironically enough, these overdoses are, are occurring. The increased number of overdoses are occurring wherever you have these needle exchanges. And I think this this understanding of that give the the, the the give a drunk the bottle is not the way to solve the alcoholic's problem. You need to slowly weed them off what they're doing. But the thing is, they actually have to want. They have they want they have to want to live. The drug addict at a certain point in time, same thing with the alcoholic, becomes self-destructive. And you need to put them, pull them out of that self-destructive pattern behavior. And a large chunk of it is led by depression. The more depressed the person is, the more self-destructive they become. And yet this is being encouraged today. It's being encouraged to, 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 to rat out our neighbor, to tell on them that they're doing something wrong that's not within the... With, 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 this is, again, giving the average person this authority and, and snitching on them. Not because they're doing... A, they're not committing a, a crime. They're not killing people. They're just simply not obeying the government's orders. They're acting as a publican. And this is fundamentally evil. It's left-hand path and a lot of people are being sucked in. And people who consider themselves to be... A, Good religious people, the religious right, are being sucked into this. Believing that turning in their own neighbors, their own fellow Christians who are going to church, illegally going to church, because now it's illegal to go to church. It's a, it's a crime to go to church. It's a crime to go to a synagogue. It's, crime, it's a crime now to go to a mosque. You can't pray anymore with, with other people, with, well, with people of your own faith. That's a crime now. And they're getting people to turn other people in, even within the same mosque. And this is what's I, I, this is what's happened within my church, and I see people within the church, within the within the um, congregation, who are starting to turn the church in. And what are they doing? They're taking away people's faith. They're destroying the faith. They're destroying their soul. They're being blackened. They're trying to pull other people down with them. Are you a good person? This is what ha again, this is this is this is how Auschwitz began. This is how Buga this is how the Holocaust began. We're at the beginning of this new eugenics program. And this is what Biden represents. Everyone everyone anyone who voted for Biden Anyone who voted for Trudeau, a large chunk of these liberals who say that they, they, they are philanthropic, they're there for the average person, they are the spearhead of the new eugenics program. What's behind them, behind the hidden face, the hidden face behind the smiling face, is an evil view of life that people are defective and need to die. They are choosing... Who are the good people who are going to die, and who are the good people who are going, uh, who are the good people who are going to survive, and who are the bad people who are going to die? They're going to euthanize them. They're going to put them out of their misery. This is a eugenics program, and people don't understand that they're participating in this.